Hello there. I put together a short tutorial on how to hunt submarines inside the game War on the Sea. War on the Sea is a Navy simulator in World War II based in the South Pacific. Currently playing as Americans and I'm being hunted by Japanese submarines. Um, the way I do it is I create a submarine hunting group um, of a couple of destroyers. In some cases uh, three destroyers is my preferred but this is early in the campaign, I only have two. You can see the path here of the merchant ship and then I am zigzagging with a sub-hunting group in front of their line of travel. Here we've started the scenario. We're going to go ahead and make sure that we're not cruising too fast before we start. And we're going to take a slightly different path so we're not too easy to predict and aim the torpedoes at. Each ship, you can enter its own navigation path by typing N and then click on the screen and then it'll start cruising in that direction at whatever speed is currently set at. I've turned the sonar on. I'm going at a pretty good speed already. You don't want to be going too fast. And then here I'm going to click just outside of here and make sure the sonar is on both ships. That will help detect the torpedoes and then we'll start the scenario. Sometimes you can use the binoculars by pressing the B button and look around you ahead, ahead of you especially for the torpedo tracks in the water which look like a confluence on the water and you can sometimes see the periscope but the light is terrible so we don't stand any chance of seeing it this time. Right now I'm just uh, continuing the movement orders, kind of guessing where the submarine is at and trying to bracket the submarine, put one destroyer on either side of it. And we're really just cruising along right now looking for the track of the torpedoes. Once we get that, um, as I'll show you, you can see quite a little bit um, and you can predict where the submarine path is going to be and then move in the right place. So it's about having a good plan um, giving the good navigation orders um, and the right speed at the right time to uh, get past the threat. Once you get past the torpedo threat you can start the hunting. Um, that's how you turn the sonar on down there, that little uh, button. You click on that, make sure it's on. Uh, there we go. So now we've detected the torpedoes. What we're looking at now is getting past them. You can see the leading edge of the spread of torpedoes. They're pointed right at me. Somewhere behind that is the submarine itself. A submarine can be going straight, it can be turning left, or it can be turning right, and it can also be going uh, deeper. So if they're smart, they'll already be avoiding the detection attempts. What we have to do is get past the torpedoes, get past the threat itself, and then find a good spot on either side of the sub, kind of hand railing it, to see if we can find it using this active sonar. So right now we keep the speed reasonably high. We take an exaggerated turn. The game is paused while I place in the navigation orders. So that's a good turn for both ships. Once we get past the torpedoes, we can start hunting. But right now we're really, really close to that spread of torpedoes might be able to see them looking in the water here right now and they're looking at the map they are about where my cursor is and if I take it off pause here for a second you might see the tracks of those there they are there's the track so you can see how close the torpedoes are to me and I'm barely gonna squeak by with my leading ship. The one ship is doing uh, 37 knots and the torpedoes are doing 30 knots so they'll, they'll sneak up on you pretty quick there. So once we're past them, which I think we are, what we're, gonna do, what we're going to do, sorry about that, is uh, set a handrail of movements on either side of where the submarine could be then I'm going to alter the speed 
down to about 12 knots on each ship. Although I'm probably going to leave it on this one until I get past uh, the spread of torpedoes for sure. But I'm definitely going to use this ship here to make the right-hand rail. And then the Dewey there, the USS Dewey, is going to be the left-hand rail. And then they're going to start doing a left and right handrail and cruising at a much slower speed once I'm past the threat of the torpedoes. To slow down in the path of the torpedoes wouldn't be good. I'm really close. And now I'm safe. So now begins the very patient steps of hunting the sub itself. And you have a good plan. If you follow the axis that the torpedoes were fired upon, then at some point the submarine was on that axis. In this case here, the hull is doing the right hand rail, and then the dewey is going to go and get on the left hand rail, and the sub should be somewhere in between them. If it's not, it's traveling at eight knots towards my ships, and it's turning left or right. So that's why you want to get in position and then you want to slow down because you'll have a closing speed of about 20 knots. If I move the hull to 12 knots and the submarine is traveling at 8 knots, that means the combined closing speed is 20 knots. Um, so we don't have long to get into place. So the hull is going to stay moving fast until it gets there. And the Dewey is probably going to stay cruising at 12 knots. You can see the range is not very far. We're only going to travel probably a maximum about 1500 yards apart and that one is centered on the path of where we believe the submarine is going to be so now it's a question of being patient and looking for the submarine in passive and active sonar the passive sonar has a longer range I don't know how long I'm not a submarine expert but the passive sorry the active range is one mile um, so that's about 17 1800 yards on the map itself so the sub's going to be out there somewhere and it's probably already turning to get outside of my track and get away from the position that they were in so right now it's an exercise in patience having a good plan originate where you think the sub was and then put your search pattern around it aha there we go victory we've seen it see it turned to the left turned pretty sharply to the left now we can move in for the kill so what we do is we uh, left click on the ship press T target on the submarine and push the attack button and then we do the same with the other ship we click left click on the hull it's already targeted the submarine, so I hit T and target it and hit attack. And now they'll move in for the actual uh, depth charge run. And they're a good distance apart, so they'll get there about the same time. You can see in the center of the screen at the bottom right, that's the actual distance and bearing and depth of the submarine. What we're going to do is click left click on the sub now and then scroll all the way in so you can see the sub. This is a nice feature of the game. And we're going to hunt this puppy down and blow him up. And right now the Dewey is closing in. You can see the Dewey at the top of the screen there on the surface. It's the sonar for dramatic effect. And as it gets just in front just to the uh, target of the submarine it starts dropping depth charges at the right height and you can manually do this at the right depth I should say not uh, height as you get closer it starts dropping depth charges I think the uh, sonar pings are a dramatic effect see the depth charge is going off at roughly the right depth because it's on automatic attack orders. You can do it manually but I'm not very good at doing it manually. <laughs> so uh, right now the ship's doing all the AI is doing all the work for me. You see the detonation's pretty close.
we lost the target briefly there, or rather the, the ship lost the target, as the back end of the ship drove over the submarine. All the noise created by the propellers, it's hard for the sonar to work. But that's okay, because we've got the hole coming up behind it. And the hole is going to do the same thing now. I think those explosions did a little bit of damage. They were close enough. They weren't close enough to destroy it, but they were close enough to do damage. Because it looks like it's sitting dead in the water right now. And that's what we're hoping for. Here go the charges. Yeah, the props have stopped turning on the submarine, so it's dead in the water. As we go overhead, more depth charges run. And it's good to have two ships, because one maintains the lock on the sonar, while the other one is dropping depth charges. See the cool explosions underwater there. It's very, uh, very good graphics in the game. So those charges are close enough to damage it. Oh, that one definitely was. Now you see that the ship is uh, blowing ballast and it wants to head to the surface of the submarine is. It's going nose up, you can see it's heading to the surface. Once you get to the surface, uh, in this case, you'll see that they switch to guns and start shooting it on the surface. So that'll be uh, a kill on the surface for sure. Just click back on the sub to make sure the attack orders is still... If you click on the ship itself, the Dewey, the yellow one, and then shows the submarine in red it means they're still hunting it so it hasn't been destroyed yet but it has been damaged enough that it's forced them to the surface and once they're at the surface the ships will uh, hit them with the deck cannons and they should be coming up in the center of the screen here the camera is still locked on the screen and any second now it should break the surface Right there, you see them breaking the surface. The guns open up. Battle stations. Shooting that submarine. Now this type of, type of submarine um, actually has a hangar out front of the conning tower right there. They're the launch rail, so they'll actually launch uh, float planes. And they'll find your convoy or your ships with the float plane, and then they'll steer the submarine into the path. Oh, hear the klaxon going, so it's definitely sunk now. And down she goes. So there we go, we just won this scenario. As it uh, starts to sink. Uh, I've made a mistake here, obviously I recorded this earlier, I'm doing the voiceover now. But what I should have done at this point is turn the attack orders off. Because now they're going back in to drop more depth charges at a really shallow depth and I'll probably take whole damage here yeah you can see it's dropping depth charges right there that's overkill it's already been destroyed um, so I'm just doing damage to myself not smart don't do that when you do this don't do that <laughs> It's taking a lot of damage, sinking fast. There you go, crush depth. So that's the end of the scenario. Um, that's how I uh, hunt subs in this game. If you don't, uh, if you don't have a good plan for hunting submarines, try this one. See if it works. I hope uh, it improves your game. And we'll go to the victory screen here end the scenario. See I took damage, you can see up at the top left. The Dewey took damage from its own depth charges by dropping them shallow when it didn't need to. 
and the enemy sub is sunk and destroyed and I have six command points to gain and what's more important is I don't lose ships and right here you can see they continue on their way they're zigzagging and running a course in front of this convoy to make sure they're safe this is early on in a campaign I only have two destroyers I'll make it a three destroyer team soon please like share comment and subscribe and if there's anything else you'd like to see uh, drop a comment and let me know thanks for watching